Hey everyone, Jad here. This week on Team Fight Breakdown, I want to look at early fights in the bottom lane and what dictates their success. In Game 4 of Rock's Tigers vs Edward Gaming at the 2016 World Championship quarterfinals, there was an extended fight in the bottom lane, after which it was Rox who got the edge, resulting in a triple kill for Peanuts Olaf. Let's get into it. The setup for this fight began early, with the dual laners battling to get level 6 first. As Prey hits level 6 on Jin, Des Caitlyn moves forward to place a trap in lane. This is immediately punished by Rox, as Gorilla's Karma lands a Q onto Deft, and Prey follows up with a bouncing grenade. Deft still manages to display his mechanics though by sidestepping Prey's deadly flourish and landing a headshot before kiting back with his 90 caliber net. With Deft low, Prey opens up with Curtain Call to go for the kill. Deft moving forward to place the trap was a bait though, as Clearlove's Lee Sin was on his way for a gank and wanted to catch rocks while they were engaged in combat. Mako's Nami moves forward and lands a bubble to interrupt Prey's ultimate and Clearlove approaches from the river. The bait worked. But unfortunately for EDG, Clearlove botches the gank. Clearlove safeguards to a ward to close distance onto rocks and activates Iron Will directly after the jump, costing him an additional 30 energy. Then, as he walks into range of Gorilla, the ideal combination would be a Dragon's Rage, which would kick Gorilla towards the wall, into an undodgeable Sonic Wave as Gorilla would be flying through the air and unable to flash the skill shot. However, thinking the combo wouldn't have enough damage to kill Gorilla, Clearlove casts Tempest first, costing him another 50 energy, so when Clearlove does cast his ultimate onto Gorilla, he does not have enough energy to follow up with Sonic Wave, allowing Gorilla to flash to the safety of his turret. Prey then stands in front of Gorilla to ensure that Clearlove's Sonic Wave can't connect. It should also be noted that Scout's Jace was attempting a roam from mid to finish the kill's bot, but he was snagged by Kuro's Rise and the pair exchanged exhausts in a small skirmish. EDG had the right idea with this gank, but just missed an execution. The bottom lane baited the enemy to move forward while the jungler arrived, they had a numbers advantage, and they even attempted a mid lane roam to catch the extended fight. Yet, due to some missed execution and Rox's smart responses, EDG missed out on any kills. Now, let's compare that to the gank from Peanuts Olaf, which followed shortly after. Rox is now down three summoner spells from the previous fight, whereas EDG only used one. Additionally, Gorilla's extremely low and EDG had the sustain advantage in lane with Nami. This means that Rox's bottom lane is still a prime target and Clearlove sticks around to try another gank. But this time, Peanut wants to join in. And while Rox have a summoner spell disadvantage, they know that Clearlove's Lee Sin doesn't have his ultimate. And they also know that as a juggernaut, Olaf has tremendous power in close combat. So if Rox can bait the return gank from Clearlove they would have more damage in the fight. Without his flash available, Gorilla knows he's a prime target when he moves forward to clear a ward. Little does EDG know, Peanut is sneakily waiting just outside of their vision. As Gorilla moves up and attacks EDG's ward, EDG attempt to pounce on Gorilla, falling for the bait. EDG attempts to engage with Tidal Wave and Gorilla responds with his Montred Shield, which not only keeps himself alive, but also helps speed Peanut towards EDG. Peanut pops Ghost as well, and it's off to the races. He throws his first axe at Clearlove as EDG attempt to retreat. Peanut's axe connects, and he was careful not to throw it too far, as he wants to pick it up for the four and a half second cooldown refund. Clearlove then flashes away from Prey's deadly flourish, and Peanut quickly switches to his next target, Death's Caitlyn. This is also when Peanut casts Ragnarok, gaining 40 attack damage and a quick burst of movement speed. Peanut lands his next axe onto Deft, which prompts him to use his summoner spell Heal and Def doesn't want to flash away until absolutely necessary, so he holds it. And with Koro beginning his teleport channel, Def hopes it will deter Peanut from following, but it doesn't. Peanut only goes harder. He picks up his axe, lands an auto attack, and throws his axe through Def again. And even though Def and Mako flash back after taking immense damage, Def is unable to avoid Peanut's reckless swing as Peanut had begun casting it before Def's flash. From the huge burst, Deft is extremely low, and Prey flashes forward to go for the kill. The flash auto attack from Prey leaves Deft at a sliver of health before he is killed by yet another axe from Peanut. Peanut then picks up his second kill with an auto attack onto Mako, who was also the recipient of several axes to the face. At this point, rocks have pushed far past Koro's teleport that was meant to scare them into a retreat. 
and Smeb's cannon is close behind with a teleport of his own. Rox still have to deal with Rumble though, as Koro casts his ultimate and flashes onto Prey while using his flame spitter to pick up the kill. He then turns on Peanut, who actually moves towards the EDG turret to avoid Koro's equalizer. Smeb and Gorilla move forward to support Peanut, and with a shield from Gorilla, Peanut stays alive. As Koro turns to finish off Peanut with another flame spitter, Smeb denies him, diving onto Koro with a flash ultimate to both stun him and prevent him from advancing. Then, before Koro can retreat, Kuro's Rise arrives from the mid lane and locks him in place with a Rune Prison, allowing Smeb to pick up the final kill of the fight with an auto attack, making it a 4 for 1 for Rox. Looking back, while both EDGs and Rox's ganks had the proper setup and baited the enemy forward, the success of Rox was found in their stellar execution and fearless play. Peanut landed every single axe, and also managed to pick up every axe for the cooldown refund, all the while weaving in auto attacks and reckless swings. But the rest of Rox also deserve credit. Gorilla stuck around for the entire fight with just a sliver of health and managed to consistently shield and speed Peanut, making him an immense force. Prey contributed strong damage and was also instrumental in keeping Gorilla alive during EDG's first attempted gank. Smeb was nearly instant in matching Koro's teleport from the top lane and then prevented Koro from chasing the kill onto Peanut. And last but not least, Kuro outroamed Scout to arrive at the tail end of the fight to allow his team to pick up the fourth kill. Ultimately, every member of Rox teamed up in the bottom lane before the 10 minute mark. An extremely early yet extremely successful team fight. All told, Peanut, on his first professional Olaf game no less, picked up the triple kill in the early game and went on to hard carry the game, ending with an 11-0-5 scoreline and 100% kill participation. With the win, the Rox Tigers closed out the series against EDG 3-1 and advanced to the semifinals of the 2016 World Championship.